Hello, and welcome to another Spotlight series. In this episode, we are going to focus on an often overlooked and perplexing hair loss disorder, trichotillomania, also known as TRIC. This is an impulse control disorder in which sufferers pluck out their own hair. New image is on the forefront of understanding the weight of this disorder on those that live with TRIC and also the business potential available for hair replacement professionals. As we continue to delve deeper into this little discussed topic, we would like to share this knowledge with you. In today's Spotlight series, we will visit four people that deal with TRIC on a daily basis in very different ways and shed light on this disorder. Now let's turn to Dr. Suzanne and see what she has to say. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Suzanne Mouton Odom and I'm a psychologist who specializes in treating people with trichotillomania or TRIC. Trichotillomania is a hair pulling disorder that affects millions of people in the United States alone. Estimates are that about 1 in 20 to 30 people has TRIC. So what is it? Trichotillomania is a disorder where a person pulls out his or her hair, causing noticeable hair loss, and he or she is not able to stop. Hair can be pulled from a variety of spots on the body, but the most common are the scalp, eyelashes, and eyebrows. Hair pulling causes distress in the person's life and is not the result of a dermatological disorder or another psychiatric condition. So what causes a person to pull out their hair? Believe it or not, people with trichotillomania say that it feels good to pull. But for different people, pulling may feel good in different ways. For some people, it feels good on the skin or scalp, while for others, it has an emotional effect, such as calming or relaxing. Still, others report that they have a belief about pulling certain hairs, maybe coarse or kinky ones. There are some common myths about hair pulling. First, that it's a result of some underlying psychological problem. We know that this is not true because people with TRIC generally do not have other psychiatric conditions. Another myth is that people with TRIC want to harm themselves or to be ugly. Again, this is untrue as people with TRIC desperately want to have hair and to look like other people who do not pull. Another myth is that TRIC is a result of trauma or abuse. Research shows that people who pull out their hair are no more the victims of abuse than non-pullers. Finally, it's common for people to believe that trick is easily stopped. That's why many people react with, just stop it. As we know, habits or behaviors can be hard to change. We all know that it's better for us to eat healthy foods and exercise every day, but it's difficult to follow through. There is treatment for trichotillomania. Cognitive behavioral treatment called the comprehensive behavioral model is the best option. This intervention identifies the situations that may lead a person to pull and then teaches them strategies for dealing with these scenarios. Next, you'll meet Emily, a young woman who suffers with TRIC and who's made it her life goal to help other people with this disorder to heal and to grow. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Minton Odom. Okay, well, where do I begin? Let's see. Um, the first time I pulled out my hair, I was in second or third grade, and we were on our way to go get our pictures taken with Santa. And we were sitting in the car at a red light, and Britney Spears hit me maybe one more time was on. I was sitting there, and I was just like braiding my hair and playing with it and stuff. And I guess it got like knotted, and a hair kind of pulled out. And at the end of it was this little white thing. I didn't know what the heck it was. And I asked my mom, I was like, Mom, what is this? And she was like, oh, it's a hair follicle. I was hooked. Ever since then, I was fascinated by hair follicles. So I continued to pull out my hair. I uh, developed my first bald spot pretty quickly. Um, about a week later, we decided, it was around Thanksgiving, we decided to go to my aunt's house for Thanksgiving. And my mom was fixing my hair. And she came across the bald spot. And she was just like, well, what is this? Now, I didn't realize I made a bald spot until she pointed out. And she was like, did you do this? I just kind of looked at her and she was like, did you pull it out? And I was just nodded. And she was just, I don't know. She realized what I had done and I realized what I did and it just both kind of shocked us. Ever since that moment I was very bitter and cold because I felt so alone. I didn't know anyone else who did this. I was a freak. I didn't know that you know, there were people out there that had the same disorder that I did. 
And so when I was diagnosed, it was one of the happiest feelings in the world to know that I wasn't alone. You know, the next thing on my mind was like, when do I finally get to meet someone with trick? When do I finally get to meet someone who pulls out their hair? When, when will this happen? You know, little, little did I know this wouldn't happen between the summer from 6th and 7th. I struggled a lot. I had a lot of ups and downs and, you know, I would do different things to help myself. I would play with like stress balls or I would wear a hat. I would play with Play-Doh. You know, I would draw, I would write. I journaled a lot. I still journal a lot today. Um, there's just so many different things to do, but the thing was I was stubborn and I wouldn't want to do them. And then I would get frustrated because I had bald spots and it's just like a never ending cycle. I don't know. I just, I hope people out there understand that we're all beautiful in our own way. No one should be judged because they may be bald or disabled or have some sort of difference. We all have a difference about us. We shouldn't be judged because of it. And no one should judge each other. I don't know. I just think we're all God's creatures and we all deserve, you know, respect. Well, thanks. There you go, Mom. Hi, I am Michelle. I'm Emily's mom. Um, Emily was first diagnosed with trick, as she told you, when she was about eight. Um, uh, trichotillomania was a very scary prognosis for me as a mom. You never want your child to ever have some kind of issue or problem or disorder. And it was very heartbreaking to me because this is a a disorder that is very prevalent to anybody on the outside. Depression and anxiety is a very internal process, whereas trick is very evident. Um, whenever somebody has a flare up or a problem, it's very evident to anybody that is looking at the, at the person. And any mom does not want their child to be subject to judgment from other peers. Um, from other children, from teachers, from other people in the community. It's hard to be a mom to someone who pulls their hair. Um, initially, when she was first diagnosed, I did everything the wrong way. I overly policed her. I would check her for spots every day when she got home from work. I would try to measure the quantity of hair that she was pulling. I would reward for less amounts of hair. Um, I was very much too involved in her condition. I have learned since then, after about a year and a half of her doing this, that the best support I can give is just that support. Give her encouragement, give her any kind of guidance and benefit to want to make better choices. She um, strives really well on praise and we have to understand that Emily is such a dynamic girl outside of her trichotillomania. For about the first year and a half, Trick defined who she was and Trick defined who our family was. Everything evolved around Emily and her hair pulling and what if this and what if that. We had to really learn different methods to embrace Emily, how she is as a young girl and now a beautiful young lady. There's so many wonderful qualities about her. She is extremely smart. She is very social. She has lots of fun um, with her friends and her peers. She enjoys acting. She is a great cheerleader. And we are focusing and try to focus our skills and our energy on those positive. But there are products on the market that, such as hair pieces and extensions from New Image that enable Emily to have the opportunity to look like the other adolescents that she goes to school with. she It gives her a lot more confidence. It gives her a boost of self-esteem. And it just adds such um, an ease. And it adds a little bit of relaxation in regard to her to be able to pursue some of the dreams and choices that she wants to pursue as a normal adolescent. Um, it's, a trick, it's still an issue in our lives. I, I feel that it is gonna be a, a struggle for Emily her whole life. Um, but it's comforting to know that there are ways and there is a product that will help her reach her full of potential and be the best girl and the young woman that she can be. So, um, and we are absolutely blessed that we were introduced to Ricky by a fellow trick patient. 
And at this time, I would like for you to get to meet Ricky. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Well, I got into Trick just like a lot of people in this business have, just by being in hair replacement and having a woman come in every now and then. And the more I got to talk with them and the more I got to work with them, the more involved I became in it. Um, I mean, it's something I totally enjoy. Uh, enjoy the people. I enjoy working with the kids. I enjoy helping them see that they are somebody and help give them the self-confidence they need. Uh, I probably use all types of hair replacement. When we go through wigs, hair pieces, hair extensions, we clip on, microlink, we bond. So really it's totally creative. Um, each case is individual, each person has a different case, so you know you really have to be creative and really think about the final outcome. Um, you know, I think it's a huge opportunity for people in this business. Uh, there's so many different people that we can service, and not just in hair replacement as well, but a lot of these uh, people with Trick have not been to a hair salon in 15 or 20 years, a lot of the older ones. I'm seeing more and more of that now. So what I've done is open my salon to anyone with Trick, whether you want hair replacement or not. If you just need a haircut, you need your hair colored. Uh, this is a safe, judgmental free environment for you to do so. And, um, you know, I think it's going to open the doors for a lot of people to do the same thing because eventually you may have one or two of those people or more that decide that they do want to go into some sort of hair replacement. So, um, you know, I just say go out there, talk to the dermatologist, talk to psych psychologists in your area. Um, build relationships with them, let them know that you can help people with trick, you can help those by just doing haircuts, hair colors, and then you have options. And If you can, bring pictures, show pictures, or if you happen to have someone with trick as a client, ask them who their psychologist is or their psychiatrist and make an appointment. Go speak to them, go talk to them, and let them know what you can do for their patients. That was incredible. What a group of people. I would like to take the time to say thank you to our guests for joining us today and also you, our viewers. Hopefully we can help open your eyes to Trick and motivate you to start exploring new business opportunities. As always, we welcome your feedback on today's broadcast. Any ideas you have for future Spotlight series by emailing me. And remember, New Image is proud to be your partner in helping men and women with hair loss change their lives.